So when we collect a lot of data and then we plot it in some type of histogram from lowest to highest, remember we need a quantitative variable there on the x-axis, uh, you can get all kinds of distributions. So here are some examples. Um, uniform would be roughly the same amount of everything. Um, you see a, a few different shapes, uh, geometric and exponential. There's lots of values at the low end. And then as you get higher and higher, it's, it's fewer and fewer. Uh, and then the one that we're going to really talk about today is the normal distribution. This is also called the Gaussian distribution. Um, it's, it's basically the bell-shaped curve where you have a lot of data in the middle, and then it kind of equally goes out in each direction. Um, so it does show up quite a bit, and we're going to look at some situations, but do be aware from this slide that there's also lots of other distributions too. It's not the case that all data is normally distributed. So here's a case of something that's artificially normally distributed. Uh, these are SAT scores from some time ago, but it, it includes 1.5 million of them. Um, when they have a standardized test like this, they often intentionally want to create a normal distribution. So they, they get all the scores and then they force it, they standardize the scores uh, to make the scores follow. So they um, they see how students perform and then they, they base the distribution off of their performances. So it basically guarantees a normal distribution. Um, and that's why if, if you do exactly the same one year as you do the next, you may not necessarily get the same SAT score uh, depending on you know, what the competition, what the peers, what the people taking that test looks like in any given given year because it's all relative uh, to force the the middle section of people to go into the center of the, the normal distribution. Um, this is a little different. So this is uh, from my daughter actually from her uh, class at school. And I, I think um, they must have gone around and just counted the letters in each student's name. And you can see that this follows somewhat of a normal distribution. You certainly have a peak in the middle and it kind of tapers out to both ends. It's got a little bit of what we call a right skew. So the right tail here or positive skew uh, is the right tail is a little longer than the left tail, uh, but basically a normal distribution. Um, and that's not always true with, with names. So here we have uh, from one of my past stats classes, I did the same thing. Um, again, we have somewhat of a right skew. So that might be a pattern that we see with names that you're going to have a few people with fairly long names in, in most groups of, of people. Uh, but still, it, you could say that it's roughly normal distribution with a right skew. You could say something like that. Um, here is one that's uh, kind of a natural appearance. So unlike the test scores, which are normally distributed, but it's, it's a forced normal distribution. It's, the, it's created to be a, a normal distribution. Uh, this is how long people hold their breath. And there were about 200 students. This is over the course of several semesters. And how long can they, they hold their breath for? And aside from one outlier, so there was one, one boy who held it for um, almost three minutes, which was amazing. Uh, aside from that one outlier, you really do see a normal distribution here. Um, maybe a tiny little right skew, uh, but, it, but it's pretty, I would say that's, that's pretty uh, normally distributed there. That bell-shaped curve is really coming through. Uh, what about here? Um, so this is dice rolls. You roll dice. This was actually from one of the spreadsheets. I, I just pulled it off of one of uh, the students' spreadsheets. Um, and, and it very much looks like a normal distribution with a left skew this time, with a, a left uh, tail. But that's just coincidence. This data is not normally distributed. Dice rolls, so you should get about the same number of ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So it's what we call a uniform distribution. We, we expect about the same amount of each one. And it just so happened, I mean, randomness is always going to tweak that 
uh, uniform distribution a little bit, it happened that this particular roll of the dice got a few extra fours and fives and not so many ones and twos. Um, but knowing that dice rolls themselves, a single dice roll is definitely not normally distributed, helps us to realize that this is just a coincidence. This is not a normal distribution. Okay, here's some various things. Let's, let's try them out. So one thing, what about dogs? Let's say you take a particular dog breed and then you measure the height and then you put them all in a, in a histogram. Are those going to be normally distributed? Um, or what about uh, household income? So each household, maybe this one makes 20,000, this one makes 25,000 a year, and we just plot those across the U.S. College entrance exams, we just looked at that, so hopefully you're saying yes, because they are um, standardized tests. When we say standardized, uh, typically that standardized refers to uh, making it into some kind of normal distribution. Uh, how long people stay in the hospital. So this person checks in, they're out in two hours, this person maybe eight hours, this person maybe they end up there 12 days. Uh, house prices, a little different than the income. This is like how much the houses actually sell for. And how many minutes of sleep maybe a given person sleeps per night or uh, maybe on average, like you have a whole class of students and we find out uh, the average number of minutes per night. So it's none of these are um, absolute answers, but there's certainly cer certain distributions that tend towards normal more than others. So height in general, height of males in the U.S., height of females in the U.S. Uh, if you just said height of adults in the U.S., it wouldn't quite be normal because females in general have a distribution that's lower height than the males. So what you really have is kind of looks like two mountains. Uh, it's called a bimodal distribution, but either one of them is normal distri uh, normally distributed. Um, so maybe I should clarify here, maybe we should separate the German shepherds into females and males, and then each type would, would probably be normally distributed. Household income is not it. So um, you do have a lot of cluster at the lower income levels, and then it just kind of drags out and out and out and out to the right end of the distribution as you get wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. You've got a really long right skew, um, so it, it doesn't really follow a normal distribution. And this is often the case with financial data. Financial data will often be heavily right skewed. And that's why we've talked about needing or a median being a really good uh, way to measure the measure of center instead of the um, average. Uh, college entrance exams, as we looked at, like, uh, are forced to be normal. Uh, staying in the hospital is often a right tail distribution. Again, so you have a lot of people that are out within one day, but then you have this kind of tailing uh, right tail that goes off and off and off um, with people staying there, even up to a year, long-term hospital stay. Uh, house prices similar to income. Uh, there's a bunch clustered at the lower level, and then it just goes and goes and goes as you get more and more expensive million, multi-million, even uh, hundreds of million dollar houses. Those are pretty rare. And minutes of sleep per night. Whether you're checking your own minutes of sleep every night, or we're surveying the class and getting their average number of uh, minutes of sleep per night, this does tend to follow uh, a normal distribution, very similar to breath times. Uh, things uh, that are naturally occurring like this uh, often do follow that normal distribution. So we can also see the normal distribution in um, the world around us if we look closely. So these are from the Tower of Pisa, and if you look closely, there's two normal distributions here. They're upside down. It's where the right foot's have step, right feet <laughs> step, and the left feet step. So you can see a normal distribution for over hundreds and hundreds of years uh, where each of those feet have stepped. Uh, this is a door that people push, and you can kind of see the normal distribution on its side here. So most people hit this door about right here, or this door right here, but you do have it trailing off in either direction. So I'd encourage you to look, you'll tend to find it, uh, oil slicks on roads, on highways, 
most of the oil leaks out about in the center of the lane, but you get some people with leaking oil as they're passing or they're uh, in one side of the lane. And so you get lighter and lighter oil slicks as you get away from the center of the uh, lane, center of a particular lane. Just all over, you'll, you'll see this pattern showing up. So big point here, it, it does show up all over the place. It shows up naturally. It shows up where we force it. Um, although a counterbalance is to this, not every distribution is normal. There are lots of other distributions that data can fall into as well.